This conference will now be recorded. Okay, uh, I want to welcome everyone that was able to uh, make the special meeting and uh, keep uh, the flow of government moving forward. Uh, I really do appreciate it. Just a couple of housekeeping things um, is that, uh, again, I hope everyone is well, your families are fine, your friends, your uh, coworkers and such. I hope everyone's fathoming this very well. Uh, I, I'm really appreciating living on the eastern side of the state at this point. Um, and again, uh, it, please, as Mike said, uh, if you would keep your uh, uh, microphone on mute. Uh, the session is being recorded for posting as part of the governor's requirements for municipal activities. Uh, however, Valerie is on also, and Valerie will be taking minutes so that we can post kind of cliff note minutes, if you will. They won't have to go through, I think Mike said it was going to be 20 or 30 pages of transcript or something that is generated. So uh, we'll keep it down to our usual two or three that people can catch the highlights of the meeting. Um, try to keep it down to only one conversation. I know this count sounds kind of funny for those of you. Those of you that are pictured, if you have something to say, raise your hand, okay, and allow the chair to recognize you. Um, and please be patient if you are only on through audio in order to be sure that we get you get you recognized and we're not just talking over each other or anything like that. Um, and uh, let's see. And also, please, when you do go to speak, say your name for Valerie so she can um, uh, catch who's making the comment or the motion or the action. And we have that captured appropriately. And uh, let's see. And please, uh, the other thing is let's keep to the issues on the agenda. We'll make this as painless as possible and we'll get through this. Hello, Janet. Uh, we will get through this. and. Uh, only a few items on the agenda. One's obviously larger, but it's really a uh, rehash. So uh, first and foremost, we'll do the seating of alternates. And uh, again, I'll keep looking up to see if someone has a comment or a question or anything. But um, it looks like we have, for alternates, we have Tom and Doug here. And we need uh, an alternate for, oh, we'll go with, uh, for Nord and for Catherine. Okay, so we will seat uh, Tom Hastings for Nord, and we will see Doug Jen, Jenny for Catherine Sampson. Okay, um, moving on to the review of the minutes for the March, whoops, I just got an ad for Norton. Um, moving on to the minutes of March 9th, 2020. I hope everyone had a chance to review those minutes. Uh, any uh, feedback, discussion, motion to accept? Uh, Jerry Dufresne, I'll make a motion to accept. Okay, motion from Jerry. Do we have a second? I'll second. Alex seconds. And uh, hmm, I wonder if I have to do, uh, Mike, uh, process-wise, probably a roll. Do I need to do a roll? Yeah, it, it works better if everybody does it one by one for the record. Okay, very good. Uh, let me, uh, I'll, I'll just call out your name as we go through so everyone's not talking over each other. Um, Tom Hastings. Yes, I'm here. <laughs> uh, except, uh, and you were at the last meeting, I believe, correct? Yes. Okay, so uh, accept or yay or nay on the acceptance of the minutes? Yay. Yay. Alex? Yay. Yay. Doug Jenny? Yes. Yes. Janet? Yes. Uh, Dick Williams? I was uh, not at the meeting, so I abstain. Okay. Abstention? Uh, Jerry? Yes. And Mark? Yay. Mark. Thank you, Mark. Uh, from the list, have I missed anyone? Unanim passes unanimously. Okay, thank you. Uh, Alex, any bills to work on? 
Uh, no bills. No bills. Any correspondence? Uh, I, I sent them out last month. Everybody should have had them. It was um, from the uh, local. I think everybody received an email on those. Okay. Anything we need to share at the meeting? I hope not. I don't have it in front of me. I don't think so. Okay. All right, moving on to the unfinished business listing. First is the uh, review and final approval of the changes to the regulations. Um, we have to remind everyone, we have five areas of the regs that are being addressed. Uh, the two largest, obviously, are the areas that Dick Williams has worked so diligently on, uh, the and, and his task force, for that matter, so thank you. Um, but the uh, Article 3 definitions, the Article 4B, the Residential Agricultural Zone regs, uh, Article 5A, which is an administrative action that's kind of a, a one-sheeter floating around in uh, some of the reg books. So we need to get that um, put out to the public for the hearing also. It's, again, under administrative action for the uh, zoning enforcement officer. Article 5F regarding fees and large project process. And the last is Article 6E, uh, otherwise known as the excavation exemption. So those are the items we need to, I'd like to try and go through tonight. Um, the changes have been submitted to NECOG. Uh, any feedback from NECOG, Mike, that you're aware of? So we, when we thought we were gonna be having a hearing, um, we, or at least as planned, I submitted to NECOG and to CROG because we border, Willington is part of CROG, so it had to go to both. Um, okay. We submitted to CROG, we got a letter back from them um, a couple of weeks ago that said basically they don't find that any of the proposed changes are, are um, not in keeping with the overall regional goals of the area, no, so basically no comment. Um, okay. I, I followed up two or three times with NECOG. They confirmed that they received it, um, but they never, they never provided any comment. Our obligation is to provide them with the proposal 30 days before our hearing. We're not, we're not in some holding pattern where they have to comment back. So I will continue to reach out to them, but, uh, I, I, I didn't even get a response to my email with the last one. So, um, you know, we'll just have to see if something comes in. Okay, so we submitted, they received it, they confirmed they received it, we've done our due diligence, and it's not necessarily, though I th appreciate your efforts, and not necessarily up to us to go beg for some type of uh, input from them. Okay. Right. Okay. All right. So, um, Jeff, this is Dick. Uh, is yep. John Filchek still in the loop at NECOG? So, and I can jump in. So they have a region. Uh, he is still the director, but they have a a basically a commission, uh, a group of people that gets together, I think, on a monthly basis to review zoning referrals. And so there's a woman and I forget her name um, who is actually re in charge of receiving those those referrals um, and then pull, sending them out to their board. Um, so let me I can actually try to find their name. Uh, give me a sec. And I can share my screen if you want to go through the zone, if you want to look at these regs together. Um, it's about a 70 page document. So I know it's a little um, overwhelming, but I can do that if it's easier. The person I who think I if, sent- I think if you sorry. do that, we'll be able to all be keep, we'll all be able to stay on the same track. So yeah, I think sharing okay. that would be great. Okay, so the person that needs to, that accepts the referrals, um, at NECOG, her name is Maureen Adams. And um, I reached out to Delia Fay, who's the senior planner there. And she said that Maureen's the one who makes sure that they get on the board's agenda. So those were sent out um, on March 10th. Yeah, uh, Maureen is a new name. Um, matter of fact, both of the people are new names. Uh, they seem to have quite a bit of turn over there. Yeah. So um, yeah, like I said, I mean, if you if you move to schedule the public hearing, I can still reach out to them and say, now here's this is the public hearing, so you really got to get them to us. Um, so Maureen Adams is listed on the, the NECOG website as the finance director for what that's worth. 
Um, so give me one second. Let me pull up the uh, let me pull up the screen, and I'm going to share this. Uh, okay. If if we are in compliance with what we're supposed to do with them, I wouldn't bother uh, worrying about anything else. Okay. Can you all see the agenda? Yep. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, I, I can't. <laughs> oh, right. So I'm sorry, I guess Jerry. What we'll have I, I'm to on the phone. Is, we'll just yep. have to make sure that, that we reference a page. Um, you know, obviously, we're starting with page one, article three. Um, so you can somewhat follow along. Okay. Uh, if, I, if I could jump in for a little bit on the front end of this. Um, go, going back with a little bit of history, we kind of came up with a bunch of tenets of what we were going to do to change the regulations. We were going to take things that were in the definitions that really belonged in the regulations out of the definitions and just put the items that only belonged in the definitions there. We are going to take out any definitions that were not relevant to anything that were in the regulations. We were going to take out anything in the, in the definitions that uh, conflicted with state regulations or simply restated state regulations. Uh, so there were quite a few changes in the definitions and we also where we brought in new uh, terminology in the uh, section for the RA uh, regulations, we had to mm -hmm. add some, some new uh, definitions there. So there's an awful lot of red lines. Uh, one of the things that I asked Mike after we came back from Florida and got my head screwed back on, most everything that you see there, even though there's a lot of red lines, are pretty much the things that we had gone back over and had agreed to several months back. Right, right. And I, I agree wholeheartedly with that. Um, I think uh, for the most part, unless someone has found something specific to discuss, um, I think most of any of the changes that we would might or we might want to address as a group have to do with some of the input from the Ag Commission. Uh, Paul, do you have your hand up? No, I'm just trying to read the thing. So oh, okay, all right, no problem. I'm just trying to be sure I wasn't saying it, it's difficult to read it on the iPhone. <laughs> Is that any better? Yeah, Mike, if you could uh, increase the magnification on that. Hold on one second. Yeah, that's better. There we go. <clears throat> so, um, again, to that point, um, if there, uh, if anyone is well versed in some of those changes uh, re um, put to us with recommendations from the Ag Commission as we go through this, uh, I'd love to hear if you felt that it has been dealt with appropriately or if there's any further discussion. But again, as uh, to Dick's point, a lot of this we've already really gone over. I just thought a refresher and being sure what we were submitting, uh, which will then go to the general public for a public hearing uh, was in order. So, uh, is there someone that wants to uh, take a lead on this as we go through it or just move our way through it? Uh, I know bed and breakfast on the se second page, excuse me, the, well, this is how my breaks up, yours might not, under B's for bed and breakfast, I know was a big piece. Uh, I don't know if there was anything uh, specific for changes to the uh, A area. Yeah, most of what is there for the bed and breakfast uh, came out of what uh, uh, Janet and, uh, and 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 company had done. And Mark, in terms yeah. Mm -hmm. of Mark, so uh, pretty much took everything that they had 
developed and simply put it into a, a format that was similar to what else was uh, in the uh, regulations. So I, I think Janet and Mark, if you look at there, I think you'll find I pretty much captured everything that you guys had put together. Yes, thank you, Dick. Yes, I agree. Okay, so we're good at bed and breakfast. Excellent. Okay. Um, and again, I know uh, buildable area. Um, the continuous area of a lot. I know that had something that was a change with our uh, RA input. Um, anything specific that anyone uh, wants to mention on, or otherwise we'll just keep moving through this specifically and quickly. Okay, um, let's see. Oh, I, I'll bring up one thing here. Uh, the uh, term farm. Uh, Doug, any input on the uh, definition of farm? I didn't have any concerns with the definitions. Okay. Uh, Oh, wait, the file I'm looking at is blank for farm. Let me pull up the PDF. Well, while you're looking for that, um, and I do see where we made the changes as asked for by the Ag Commission under farm brewery, farm distillery, and farm winery, and referencing the uh, public acts for each of those, which is great. Just so I can, I just want to let everybody know, uh, the document that I'm using was what was sent out, but if you want to open it up on your own, if you have a, you know, two screens or you have the space mm -hmm. on your monitors, it's part of the agenda that's on the town's website. It was all published as one PDF. Um, so if you, if you want to have your own for reference, that's where this is. Um, the reason it's a little uncomfortable to look at is because we had to send a red line to to the regional agency so i had to run this through a software program to do it which which is why it looks a little ugly but if you need to pull it up on your own that's where it is could you repeat that where it is please yep if you go to the town's website and you go to the planning and zoning commission um, and pull up their agenda the first page is the agenda but if you keep scrolling the the rest of the 60 70 pages is this document Oh. We got that in our emails too. Yes, it came in the emails as a, as uh, five or six <coughs> attachments. Um, but this is all this is all one. Okay. But but it's the same. It is the same version, the same revisions as what was in the email. To answer your question, Jeff, about the definition of farm, I'm comfortable with that. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Um, I have a I have a question about go. farmer farmers market. Okay. The, the last line says um, produced by the participating farmers with the sole intent and purpose of generating a portion of household income. And I I don't remember seeing that. I was just wondering why that that line was in there. That, that definition is the same definition that was in the existing regulations, and it, oh, was, okay. put in, it was put in, you know, with the Ag Commission's uh, blessing back then. So uh, it's nothing that, new. That might it's, be to distinguish between um, somebody who has, I don't know, an industry farm rather than a home farm, I guess. Yeah, well, uh, by and large, 
things that applied pretty much to, you know, the farmers and what they did, we deferred to whatever the Ag Commission wanted. The only place that we had any pushback was where some of the aspects of what was done with the farm uh, impinged upon adjoining people, you know, like neighbors. So like setbacks, things like that. But as far as all of the uh, definitions, we pretty much uh, uh, deferred to whatever the Ag Commission wanted. Okay, thank you. And, and Janet, that definition, that sh the words that you pointed out are word for word from the Connecticut General Statute on farmer's market. So I really don't want to change it if the state says that. No, that's fine. I just thought it was a little odd wording, that's all, but that's fine. Okay. I thought it might be too restrictive is what I was thinking. <clears throat> Okay, moving through, I'm just going through trying to hit upon some areas here. Uh, uh, I know we had some previous discussion on nuisance, and I believe nuisance has been struck from this uh, as a definition. Was that was that relatively old or new, Dick? Uh, nuisance is now in the um, in another part in the residential. Thank you. I thought I thought it was something like that. Thank uh, you. Or yeah. Yeah, I, I think we moved it to the regulations and out of the definition. Itself. Excellent. Okay. Because, Very good. Because the nuisance is unique to the uh, Airbnb kind of thing. Right. Uh, recreational right away. Shopping center signs. Sign area, street swimming pool. I see nothing else here to bring up from a standpoint of the definitions. Does anyone have anything specific? Um, I'd just like to point out um, that a couple of the items are no longer alphabetical. So um, before we actually publish it, um, I can send Dick few that I found there might be more um, we might just want to go through it and make sure they're you know in the right order I think some of the things that we changed got moved around a little bit yeah I'll admit I get kind of blurry eyed <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> after a while and and uh, by all means look through it uh, and all of you and if you find any grammatical things or spelling things or you know stuff like that uh, bring them up and i do have the word version of this whole thing without all the red lines and i can make the final changes in there okay okay so except for those uh uh alphabetical and maybe a typo here or there. I think we're good with the definitions. Um, mm -hmm. Jeff, I, I would propose that we call a vote on accepting each one of these as an individual item. I, I'm fine with that. Um, okay. Do I hear a motion? Well, I guess with the... Um, a motion regarding acceptance of the Article Three definitions upon final review of alphabetical assortment and grammatical correctness. I'll make that that uh, motion. Okay, uh, Dick Williams makes that motion. Valerie. Yeah. This is uh, Janet. I'll second it. Janet Bellamy seconds. And let's take the roll. <laughs> Uh, Tom Hastings. Yes. Yes. Alex. Yes. Yes. Doug. Yes. Janet. Yes. Yes. Dick. Yes. Jerry. Yes. Mark. Yes. 
Okay, uh, it's unanimous. We'll accept the definitions with those uh, uh, tweaks to them. Very good. The next item is the Article 4B. And uh, Michael, call that up for us. <clears throat> I think I went too far. Hold on. I did that once. <laughs> I got slapped. Article 4B. Just as some preface to this, uh, one of the main things that drove this was uh, two letters from, uh, and I can't remember everyone's name, but basically questioning the uh, requirements for uh, what drove the lot size. And, and basically what would end up happening was where present uh, re regulations were written is that we would unjustly target uh, farmland as the most appropriate places to to build houses. So we wanted to relax the uh, restrictment restrictions on uh, slope, on uh, ledge, on uh, a whole number of other items, and we discussed individually all of these guidelines of how we would change that. And that's where we came up with the concept of the buildable area and the enclosed rectangle and all those things like that. Um, and we also had to bring in a whole number of new uses and accessory uses so we're consistent with our definitions. At one point, we had changed some of the preamble. Uh, if you go back a little bit Mike, uh, with that first part, there was this preamble that was in there that uh, was pretty much driven by the Ag Commission. Uh, we had tried to slim that down, but uh, in deference to the Ag Commission, we put things back the way it was uh, in, the, in the previous version. So there's no changes to that at all. Okay, um, and I can see where um, okay, so we have uh, on page twenty four or special permit uses page twenty three going into twenty four um, again, items I believe that were already there. Um, the short-term rental is something that is an addition for us, and that's where the nuisance uh, definition shows up. It's on page 25. Yeah, well, we, we changed the definition of religious uh, use to places of worship, and that is okay. consistent with the definitions and also into the regulations. Uh, we also change some of the definitions in terms of uh, the uh, farm to table, farm distilleries, wineries, breweries. So they're all consistent with what's in the definitions. So there's a lot of this is all, to, you know, to try to make the uh, permitted and special permitted uses to be in parallel with what the definitions are doing. Right. Excellent. Jeff, back on permitted uses, I noticed for farm stands, it's still calling out section nine, but because we added a section, it really needs to be section 10. 
Oh. Right there, number four. Number Sorry four, to No, article B. Flipping through here. Because section five became six, section six became seven. Eight became uh, nine. Section, and eight became nine. And then agriculture became 10. Right, okay. I think in one of the versions that I had sent out a couple months ago, I think I had caught all that, but maybe that wasn't the one that Mike had done the, the back and forth on. Okay, so we just need that fix to make that section 10. Thank you, Doug. And stores. Okay. Okay, moving on through pages 26, 27, and 29, 30. Uh, I'm into the uh, zoning regulations, land use, minimum lot size, minimum buildable area. Um, we have uh, from an agricultural standpoint, we have no requirements on lot size or buildable area for agricultural farm stand, farm store, or farmer's market. Did we skip over short-term rentals or was I asleep? Uh, we mentioned short-term rentals. Was there something you needed to uh, discuss? I'm still hung up with the whole usage of the word nuisance. <clears throat> So we moved it out of definitions and it still exists. So why do we still want it to exist? I'm worried it's going to be get expanded upon by the public. I, I, I think that Jenny is speaking. Who is speaking? This is Doug Jenny. Okay. Well, this is specifically as related to the um, short term rentals and allowing the um, zoning enforcement official to take action if if there's uh, a complaints. I think the idea, it's Dick Williams, I think the idea was we didn't want to give a license for someone to have a short-term rental and let them continue to do it forever. We wanted to have a way to go, to go back and review how the uh, owner of this short-term rental was uh, interacting with its tenants. And if the tenants were causing a problem in the neighborhood, we wanted a way to not renew the uh, permit. So these permits were you know, uh, and I don't recall exactly the term, but I think it was a year or two. And then if, if they were a problem, that we could d deny the permit. And that nuisance came into a, a way to define what were the problems associated with that short-term rental. And this nuisance is only applicable to the short-term rentals. Is it something legally that the ZEO could stand behind? Like it, it feels like it's something that the police would really be involved with, not zoning. I'm not sure why zoning is talking about enforcing <clears throat> such a topic. Well, this is Mark Schnubel speaking. They're going to be issued a permit, and then that permit has to be renewed the following year. So if the property has been a nuisance for that year, it allows us an area where we can point to that we're not renewing the permit because of these nuisance violations. And Mike, this, this is Dick Williams. The whole idea of the short-term rentals is a little bit obtuse to uh, what might be considered normal uh, regulations for planning and, and zoning. 
but since this is a permit to for use, uh, it is a permit that has a renewal on it, whereas most permits are to simply say, okay, you're going to build a house, we give you the permit to build a house if you meet these conditions. In this case here, this is a renewable permit, not one that is in place forever. And in not having another place within our organization to put this, this was the only place we could see it made any sense to put it. If I could just jump in quickly, just to kind of confirm. So you guys are tasked with, in, you know, creating regulations to, to deal with health, safety, and welfare. And like, like Dick said, someone who's changing a single family home to something that's being rented more frequently has sort of changed and adjusted the way in which it's being used, which is why we're able to regulate it. The stuff that's in yellow, including this, is our changes that were made specifically because the, of the Ag Commission's input. So we took it out of the definitions because they were concerned that someone would use these standards to call a farming operation a nuisance. And if you remember, Ken Slater was at that meeting and he basically agreed that if you drop this into the short-term rental section, it would, it would make it so that folks couldn't say, this farming operation is a nuisance and I want you to do something about it. Um, so that's why, that, that's why it's shown in yellow, if that, if that helps at all. And this Dick Williams, having not been there when this was discussed, I, I agree with the uh, change as it's done. Does that make sense to you, Doug? Yeah, it does, provided this word does not show up anywhere else except for this line item here in the regs. Well, it, it shows up here and it shows up under number four in those same regs for the short-term rental where the zoning enforcement officer um, uh, may revoke a permit uh, for a temporary rental uh, if a nuisance, uh, having imposed a nuisance on neighbors. And obviously, you know, he would need to have some type of uh, teeth or not so much teeth as some type of a definition. But I, I do believe, Dick, correct me if I'm wrong, this is, since it's been moved out of the definitions part, this is the only spot where nuisance shows up. Correct. It, 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 where it's only in that section, it only applies to that section. Are we good there, Doug? No, I'm searching the definitions and it shows up in the definition of buffer, buffer area or buffer strip. Under the definition section? Yeah. I want to strictly confine it to short-term rentals. I don't want to have a door partially cracked open that somebody could apply it somewhere else. Specifically with it doesn't necessarily have to be agriculture, but that's certainly on my mind. Oh, I see. Buffer, buffer area, buffer strip. Strip of land, any building structure or use other than natural woody growths, landscaping, fencing, screening, design, lines or other nuisances. Do we have another word for nuisance for buffer? Uh, sub substitute the word issues for nuisance. Or other issues. Other issues? Or other problems? So, th so this is a definition, it's not regulatory. Um, so, you know. I understand kind of the conversation about being concerned about the word. I would just say that this is saying that one could create a buffer to to shield or block a nuisance. Um, so it doesn't give any it doesn't give any regulatory authority or, or say anything about a nuisance. It just suggests how a buffer might be used. And we can certainly look at other we can certainly come up with other language for the public hearing. Um, but, you know, 
this is the only other place that I see it used when I did a search. Um, I've got annoyance, inconvenience. I, I think the word issue is generic enough. And, and keep in mind, this is a definition, not a regulation, and it's it's given examples of things that would you know, apply. It's not yeah. meant, meant to be all inclusive. So the, the idea is these are examples, and then or other things. And I think you know, oh, it's, your disturbances. Are there disturbances? Yeah, that, that would work too. Yeah, that would probably work better than issues. I, I would I would go with what Janet just uh, recommended. This is Dick Williams. So how's that, Doug? If we move that out to disturbances. I think that's fine. Um, it's interesting where the word shows up elsewhere in the regs in the other articles. It does? Oh, uh, yeah, a lot of times. There's 11 matches. A lot of it is in... Uh, Uh, Earth, the uh, Article 6E, Article 4C. I, I don't know. I'm I'm starting to go down a rabbit hole now, though. Okay, <laughs> let let's just stick to the areas we've already approved the definitions. So, where else within definitions uh, is the word nuisance used? Nowhere that I could find. Okay, so let, let's move past uh, the definitions that we've approved and then start work to uh, working on, on the RA's issues. Okay. And, All and right. If, and if nuisance ahead, is then. used w within the discussion of the Airbnb to short term rentals, it's only applying to that short term rental. So, so Doug, is, is the word nuisance used in other places besides in the short term rental? In Article 4B, no. In the rest of the regs that are published, yes. Which one specifically? I got to go back to the file I just pulled off the website. There's 11 cases, one of which is in the definitions we just covered. So there's 10. Article 4C. These are articles that we are not discussing tonight. If, if they're not ones that we're changing, then there for another day. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, moving on, moving on. Um, as I said, no minimum lot size, no minimum buildable area for agricultural farm stand, farm stores, farmers market. Um, also, we uh, moved the, uh, I believe we changed the agricultural structure back to what's currently in there at 25, 25, and 25. Is that correct? Yes. Yep. And again, uh, farm stand with uh, no front setback. 
farm store, 50 feet, farmer's market, no front setback. Um, so those have been addressed. Uh, height of building, height of structure. I'm moving into uh, page 36. I'm on uh, looking up to Article 4B, Section 6. I'm sorry, go ahead. Excuse me, it's Janet. If you go to page 34, single yep. family dwelling. Yes. Um, so it looks, I think it's just the way it printed, but it looked like we crossed out single family dwelling minimum 900 square feet, but that's, that's not I really. I think that's part of the box. I think that's part of the box it's supposed to fit it in. Uh, that's what, okay. I just wanted to make once sure. You once you take out the, once we accept the changes and take the crossed out sections, it'll jump back into the box. Okay. Good. Uh, uh, Jeff, one thought here. Um, the, yes. The, the standard says minimum finished floor area required for certificate of occupancy. Planning and zoning and, and you know, we don't regulate when certificates of occupancy are issued. If the building is fit to be habit, you know, fit to be occupied, the building official has to issue one. So, you know, I don't know if there's been any consideration to changing that to say certificate of zoning compliance or, or, or final zoning approval or something because the building official is not gonna hold up a CEO specifically um, because of a zoning regulation, he can't do that. So it would have to be, you know, I don't know if there's been any consideration. That looks like it's actually been struck though. Um, I think it's just the formatting because of the, the track changes, at least on the way I'm looking at it, but I could be wrong. Are you saying, is this in number three, livable floor area requirements and then the first few lines? Yeah, just before section four height of, or number four, height of buildings and structures. Right, I, I see red lines through that. No, I think they're under it. It's under, <laughs> yeah. The red line I, is- Oh, are they? To stick Williams, I believe that's the language that is in the existing regulations. Oh, okay. Which is, so, so I don't think that was something new added. The only thing we did is, uh, re-examine the 900 square feet, but the, the wording in terms of the COs, the same as what is in existing. If, if you look at the existing uh, regulations, I think you'll, you'll find it there. But I, I got no problem with changing, you know, it for what Mike was saying. You know, it's, it's uh, th the key thing is that single family dwelling, minimum of 900 square feet, two, Two family dwelling, 900 square feet for each unit. And uh, since sometimes people uh, oh, I'm sorry. Don't, fin don't finish the home before they occupy it, the idea is that they need to have a minimum of 900 square feet when they occupy the home. So if they build in a, you know, story and a half house and they're not going to finish off the second floor, when they occupy it, there's got to be a minimum of 900 square feet of occupied space. Uh, Tech, this is Alex. I don't, I don't think that's correct because we're saying that the building can be 900 square foot. There's a, there's a criteria that the building inspector has. Don't, you doesn't need 900 square foot to occupy the house. There's, there's criteria about having bathrooms, uh, kitchens, and stuff. For this, for them to get a certificate of occupancy. Hi, this is Janet. I I agree with Alex that um, the the house would be a minimum of 900 square feet, but people could live in it with less finished. Uh, we want to change it. We can change it, but. I believe that is pretty much in line with what we already have in the existing regulations. 
Well, I think, I believe Mike is saying that if they met the requirements for a CO, then he would have to give it to them, even if they had less than 900 square feet. Is that, is that what I'm hearing? Um, my understanding of the building code is that if the house is safe, and, and the only reason I'm, I'm bringing this up is because I I uh, had a previous boss who was in, in a court case over it, and he was trying to hold up a, a zoning, the issuance of a you know, building uh, CO because of a zoning violation, and they went to court and the judge said, building official doesn't regulate zoning, so if the house is safe, he's got to issue a CO. If the zoning officer wants to deal with it, through through zone, the channels that the zoning officer has, that's fine. Um, so I'm just I don't want to be in a position where I'm saying you don't have 900 square feet, and the building official saying sorry he meets the building code. Um, so I just brought up on the on the page now. This is the current set of zoning regs that are on the website. So this isn't proposed to be changed. This is what we have now. Yeah. See, looking at what we did change, is we had. Originally, there was one story dwelling, one and a half story dwelling, two story dwelling with different requirements. Uh, and they, this minimum finished uh, is, is shown there is the same thing that was already there. We didn't change that. We simply took away the one and a half and the, and the two story and made it 900 across the board. This is Janet. I don't I don't understand why we wouldn't take that out if it's going to be different from what the building official is going to say. Are we are we looking at hi, this is Jeff. Thanks. Sorry, Valerie. Um are we looking at two different things though? With what's written in here at least in the the middle section there it talks about a footprint versus a minimum finished floor area wouldn't those be wouldn't those be two different things when when we changed it we tried to do away with uh, too many this this and this if if one story dwelling 900 square feet was enough why did it have to be different for one and a half story and two story? Uh, we left right. the minimum. We left the minimum finished floor area the same as it was previously. Uh, my two cents worth is that if if someone's going to move into the place, uh, either we need to put language to be in compliance with a building uh, inspector, but you shouldn't be able to build a house and move in where you only have you know studs up and you know in in the place you know half of the bathroom fixtures and the like of that i mean the house that needs to be at least finished off to a minimum of 900 square feet in order to be compliant to move into now whether you, whether you want to use different language than what's there, but that was the language that's been there previously. Oh, okay. All right. For the one story, 900. For the larger, 12. For the larger, 6. And only 800. Hmm. Um. Well, this For is no good Jean reason, I'm I'm willing to I'm willing to accept it and keep it moving. Um, right. At this point, since it is uh, from our previous regs. And it was only and it's only a hundred square foot difference from what was there previously for the uh, larger dwellings. Yeah, I, I would say it hasn't caused us any problems for, you know, 10 years. So it's probably not the biggest thing to, to 
worry about right now. Unless anyone has a burning issue, I mean, we can move on. Okay. Thank you. Okay, 34, 35, sporting clubs, kennels. Jeff to the required setback. Uh, Mike, Mike set, if you could, I'm sorry. If you could get rid of the, the uh, old stuff on the right and enlarge the one on the left. Okay, yeah, interior lots. Um, on the interior lots, what we tried to do is make them uh, less restrictive than what had been tried to be done with the previous regulations. Uh, right. The previous regulations basically were trying to discourage an interior lot and make it almost, uh, you know, prohibitive to have one. Uh, you know, and we took out things that were uh, obviously prejudicial in terms of comments and uh, most of the we're not trying to encourage uh, interior lots but we don't want to take and put restrictions on interior lots that were overly restrictive and i think that mark had a lot of input on this since he happens to live on a interior lot And I think a lot of the changes that we made to this were in discussions with Mark. Is that correct, Mark? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Any comments on the interior lots? Okay, dimensions and standards, we're good. Um, driveways, I believe we didn't have that much input. We got a, a little bit of input um, with removing load bearing, and, but otherwise yeah. it was pretty much as is. Yeah, I, I spoke with uh, both the fire chief and the fire marshal and yep. asked them to review what was in there. And they, they basically said they wanted it pretty much left alone. We made uh, a, a few minor changes where it made sense, but other than that, we left things alone. Okay, so and that would include you're interviewing them for the, uh, obviously the uh, firefighting water supply into F underground cisterns and such all the way up to uh, Article 4B, Section 9, Home Occupation Correct. Rural Business. Okay, um, yep. any comments from anyone there? Okay, uh, moving forward, uh, again, home occupation and rural business, page 42 and 43, in this case, 44. Um, and, and basically ahead, what, we, what we did with the home occupations is we moved the definitions of what were home occupation rural businesses. We moved them from the definitions part into the regulations part. Right. And so, in in general, it, it didn't change much of anything. It's just changed right. what we put what we put where. Okay. The occupation uh, permit required. Requirements draft. I'm on page 46, going on to 47, unless someone has anything specific. Uh, that leads us to Article 4B, Section 10, Agriculture.
Jeff, this is Doug Shannon. Yes, Doug. Um, on this page, it might start out. Mike, if you could scroll down a little bit, please. Right there. I believe we spoke back in, uh, when was the last meeting? February? No, March. No. I think it was February, right? February, February, I believe. We spoke about taking out that section, that little letter C there about specifying the number of signs under uh, seasonal agricultural signage. Go back a couple of pages, Mike. Right there. We, we did. We did. Uh, we did uh, talk about that. And it was. It was. Uh, it was discussed that um, no farmer would actually spend the money to put up more signage than he actually felt they needed. The only thing I would say to that is Dick Williams is. Uh, Sean Patrick's uh, uh, nursery. I think he's probably got a dozen signs up in various places because he's in such a remote area that it's kind of hard to find him. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I wouldn't be adverse to simply striking that out totally. Doug, what do you think about okay. that? This is Doug. I'm advocating it does get removed. So I agree with you, Doug. Yeah, I agree. this is Janet. I agree too. Well, honestly, if you're taking that out, don't you end up taking A out also? No. No. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I'm thinking of four individual one foot sign, one square foot sign. No, okay. I'm sorry. I'm thinking of something else. Okay. No, I'm fine with that. Anyone else with input? And then on, on letter C down below, where did farm dinners come from? Because that's the first time I've seen that. It's not in my notes from February. Doug, can you scroll? Mike, can you scroll down? Can we see some of this? I don't believe that was in the original regulations. I think it's if uh, someone on their farm wants to host a a, a dinner that you know that they would have to require you know a, a certificate of compliance. So why would I have to go get a certificate to host a bunch of people over for dinner on my farm? I, I don't like the words. I want it removed. Well, I think these are, this is implying, uh, this is Janet, I think, is this implying that these events are uh, to raise money? I think, I think they're more along the lines, they don't necessarily have to raise money, but they have to be open to the public, so to speak, mm -hmm. such as a hayride or a petting zoo or an educational demonstration. I think this was this was included it's in yellow so that leads me to believe it was following something from the ag commission i know when we had the meeting in february we there was concern about the use of the term farm to table establishment and i don't know if this changed from that to farm dinners to make a clear distinction i just did a search 
this doesn't show up anywhere else, but um, I don't know if a previous iteration of this might have used a different term in lieu of farm dinners. And then when we removed farm to table establishments, um, because I do seem to recall that being in there, um, that's my only that's my only thought. Just Dick Williams, my, my two cents, Rick, if you just take it out, it doesn't change anything because it's it, it is an open ended thing. It, any sort of temporary use that you're doing, it needs to be run through to get a s certificate of zoning compliance. So it, it could be, you know, holding a, uh, a, a, you know, a Sunday morning prayer virgil on your farm, you know. So it, any, anything that is unusual on your farm would require a permit. So, and, and this is less restrictive than what was there originally. Uh, I personally felt that the idea of, of a corn maze requiring requiring a permit being kind of strange. And that's why that was taken out. Yeah, even then taking out the privately hosted events, which were there before too, right. Yeah, we can strike the farm dinners. I'm fine with that. Anyone else have an issue? <clears throat> okay. I guess uh, if I could chime in, I have a question just because I'm ultimately thinking of on the enforcement side. Is the perspective of the commission that you want people to be able to have uh, if they own a farm, you want them to be able to host dinners on their farm for people they're not related to, where they pay the farmer to have a dinner out in a field. Is the sentiment that you want them to allow, you want them to be able to do that? Because if you do, I think we ought to keep it because this is saying the commission acknowledges this is something that we think you ought to to uh, be able to do. If, if you take it out, you know, I, I, you're, I don't think you're changing the regulatory sense of this section, but you're sort of not suggesting that this is something you're open to. And for the purposes of consistent interpretation of the reg, I think it's if you if you think you want people to be able to do it, you might consider having it mentioned somewhere. I just want to make sure it's clear what the interpretation will be for enforcement. Would well, we meet that would, instead of listing each individual idea someone might come up with? Again, we you know we don't want to get into that. We've tried to steer away from that. As opposed to adding that in, we do have the statement of other similar uses. Would the statement open to the public fulfill that need? Yeah, and and by the way, if Doug wanted to have a dinner at his farm, he would have to comply with the state. Uh, health department in order to get a permit. So that's going to be regulated by them, not by planning and zoning. That's very true. So I, I yeah, would say a... I would say right now let's take it out because it kind of puts a red flag up for it. Yeah, again, I, I remain fine with that, and that's a good point, Dick, about the uh, the uh, health department would need to regulate that in some way, shape, or form, whether he's serving bags of peanuts or a turkey dinner, one or the other. When are we coming over for dinner, Doug? <laughs> when we can be more than six feet apart, or less than six feet apart from each other. All right, I'm taking you at your word. Okay, um, anything else there leads us to the 4B Section 10 Agriculture. Anything else? Otherwise, I think we're at the end of uh, that section. Yahoo. Okay. Motion. Accept the RA zoning section with the changes so noted. 
Yes, acceptance of uh, Article 4B agricultural residential agricultural zone um, with indicated changes by Dick Williams and uh, seconded. I'll second it, Alex. Who was that? Tom Hastings. Tom Hastings seconding. Yeah, Who? I tried. To. You tried to. Okay. Tom Hastings. Okay. And uh, all right, let's do the roll. Uh, Tom Hastings, I'll take that as a yes. Yes. Yes, Alex. Yes. Doug. Where are the, where will the notes that are the changes that we spoke about going to be documented? You'll see them in the, uh, they'll be obviously in the minutes, but they'll also be in what we release to the public. The changes themselves will be released for the public before the public hearing and open for comment. And, and, and Jeff, what I would recommend strongly that what we release to the public be the items that are not redlined. Oh, absolutely. Okay, I'm a yes. Thank you, Doug. Janet? Yes. Dick Williams? Yay. Yay. Jerry? Yes. Yes. Mark? Yes. Yes. Okay, unanimous. Okay, those are the two meaty sections. Uh, going to Article 5A, Section 4, Administrative Action. Uh, again, this is something that's been kind of floating around uh, in some uh, reg handbooks, reg regulation uh, document books, and not in others. And this was a reg. I'm looking for help here from the uh, historical. Did we, is this something, this isn't anything we voted on before, was it, Alex? Uh, not that I remember. Not that I remember. So, so again, what we're looking to do in this case is uh, acting on behalf of the commission, the uh, zoning enforcement officer may issue a certificate of zoning compliance for the following. Uh, and in, for an addition to any existing structure uh, for any permitted use in any zone, uh, as opposed to of no more than 500 feet, square feet in gross floor area. So basically Is we it? took off the limitation on this and we're looking for um, the zoning enforcement officer to have uh, uh, jurisdiction on, he, he gives the okay for houses now, so, you know, it didn't make sense for uh, something uh, with a limitation of 500 feet. Yeah, the history on this, uh, Jeff, this is Dick. Uh, yep. This is something that Michael Gardner had recommended multiple right. times in the past. So yep. we, we just kind of pulled this in and made the changes. So it was in compliance with what he had re recommended. And we also ran it past Mike. So... This simply gives the, uh, you know, the, the CEO the approval that goes in parallel with what he's doing on buildings himself. Right. So, not a big thing. Mm -hmm. uh, any uh, feedback? Any motion to accept the changes for Article 5A, Section 4? Uh, so, oh, so moved by Alex. Alex. So moved by Alex Hastillo, seconded by Janet Bellamy. Uh, do the roll. Uh, Tom Hastings. Yes. Alex. Yes. <laughs> uh, Doug. Yes. Janet. Yes. Uh, Dick Williams. Yay. Jerry. Yes. Mark. Yes. It's unanimous. Okay. The next section should not have a lot of discussion. There's a lot of red writing, but this is something that, again, 
Uh, Dick had worked on, again, this is Article 5F regarding fees, and the major change, this has to do with, again, a large-scale technical or professional application for land use that would require uh, some very, very um, specific and wide-scale analysis, and we don't want to be on the hook for that should uh, we need things like engineers and such beyond even what NECOG could offer up to us. So this is where we're asking for a, uh, a large complex land use facility to uh, pay a fee that goes into escrow, and it's either $50,000 but not less than 1% of the estimated cost of construction. And we would draw off of that should the need for consultants and engineers be required. And uh, at the end of the application fee, we would return all sums that remained to the applicant. Uh, pretty much it's in acceptance. We're really just moving this on to public hearing so that we can move forward. Actually, I think we did take an acceptance on this, didn't we, Dick, previously? Yep. We've actually voted on this and approved it. Uh, okay, twice. so we don't need a motion on this. We will just add this into our uh, public hearing and reg changes. Yeah, and, and this uh, goes into the regs and it goes in parallel with an ordinance that is also hopefully in the works because this has to be in an ordinance in addition to the regulations. So uh, well, this has been reviewed by legal uh, yep. Everyone's passed on it, so it should be a no-brainer. Okay. Excuse me. Um, I thought you said 5F, and we're looking at a B on the screen. I'm sorry, what was that again? I thought you said we were at section 5F, but we're looking at a B on the screen. Oh, it's, it's just, it goes up higher. Could you scroll up, Michael? Okay. A little bit higher. There we go. Article 5F, Section 1. Okay, I've got it. I've got it. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, next item is Article 6E, Section 2. Uh, and this is our uh, changes to the uh, excavation exemption and again this is where we work closely with the agricultural commission and uh have put in requirements uh the written request submitted uh by the applicant to the commission asked for agricultural commission review and comment on the request this request shall address the following detailed plan describing how the proposed filling excavation is essential to the existing and or proposed agricultural production mm -hmm. Uh, a site map of the area to be excavated or filled, project time frame to begin and complete all activities, estimate of the volume of material to be excavated, filled, processed, and or removed, uh, details regarding truck access and routes. Uh, the commission may at its discretion inspect the site to see if the activities are in compliance with the request, and this exemption only intended for limited excavation and filling. Um, and Jeff, we should also point out that this has been discussed previously and voted on and approved by the commission. So this is, we, sh we should simply restate that we reinforce the approval. Okay. And yep. No need I for, yeah, this is, this is, this is just simply a reinforcement of our, our existing approval and this will move forward to the public hearing also. All right. All right. Uh, Jeff, uh, this is Jerry. Uh, yes. Uh, Article D. It says estimate of the volume material to be excavated, filled, processed. The processed, I, I, I don't like that word in there because uh, that sets them up to do, uh, you know, processing like the situation we have on Westford Hill Road. Uh, a processor makes a lot of noise, and you end up. Uh, it's a somebody's running a gravel pit. 
Well, the thing is, we have the option to reject it with that in there. The the issue is if you and what was brought up, I believe, by the Ag Commission, and please anyone help me out if I'm off on this, is that if you have 50 acres and you're in the middle of your 50 acres and you're doing this processing, you're well beyond the boundaries in most cases of uh, excessive noise or problems or whatever. And what we've heard is that just the material, the way it's collected or the way it's removed in our area, it needs much of it needs to be processed at times. So we have the option. We just needed a more complete activity of the commission as opposed to just getting the word of the applicant that, you know, oh, yeah, this is uh, I'm just going to dig a hole and going to move forward. Uh, we do understand that processing might need to be done, but it needs to be done under all of these conditions. And it needs to be approved. Basically, right. what this does is it puts a uh, process where is planning zoning working with ag uh, approves whether what's being proposed is reasonable or not. And it, it gives it a, a chance to go back and review it periodically. So it's as opposed to an open-ended approach that gave us no recourse, this gives us uh, a way to regulate it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, All Jerry. Right. Thanks. Okay. So again, that will move toward the public hearing. Um, and that was the last of the items under review and final approval of the changes to the regs. Thank you, folks, very much for going through that. Um, the second item under unfinished business is simply a quick update on 154 Westford Hill Road. We don't need to go into an executive session. Uh, I can inform you that the stipulated agreement and the pieces that we discussed the last time, uh, I won't get into the specifics because my only issue in not going to an executive session is that Though it has by send, been signed off by both parties, the selectman's office has signed off on it, as well as the um, uh, owner of 154, it still needs to be processed in the court and the courts are closed. So um, we are waiting for that before we put out any type of public statement or what the requirements are specifically, uh, in, just in case there's a problem with the court on this. So once the courts open up and we're able to get this process and put through, uh, we will move forward. And there won't be any changes to the dates or anything because any activity that was agreed upon uh, is in place. It's also now enforceable, uh, according to Ken Slater. So we are able to use any of the information in there that allows it to be enforceable, the dates, the times, uh, the uh, material being moved and giving us bill of ladings for that, all of that stuff is enforceable under the stipulation. Yeah, Jeff, this is uh, Dick. Uh, missed the last meeting. So basically, what we agreed to in terms of stipulations two months ago uh, are in place right now. Yeah, um, we can, you and I can uh, have an aside and talk about some of those issues um, uh, and uh, just uh, bring it up to speed. Hopefully the courts will open and it'll become public knowledge. But yeah, I mean, a vast majority, uh, we did talk about a few things under executive session that I can't get into right now, but uh, we can follow up on that. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, any comments on the Westford Hill Road? Okay, thank you. Uh, zoning officer report, Michael, anything to say? Here? Um, I guess I can, I mean, things are picking up again. Um, we had about a month where everything was more or less dead. Um, but we are seeing people starting to do things now that they're home. And, and, um, so we are processing permits. I don't have the report cause it wasn't part of the agenda, so I can't share it with you. Um, but I've also been working on the zoning map. So basically what I did is I printed out about a six foot long, long map of the town and I'm going through the written text that's in the zoning regs and coloring it so that I can kind of verify and then I'll present that to you. Um, kind of 
related, but you don't need to adopt the zoning map because we're not proposing any changes to the zone boundaries. We don't have to right. do that as part of the codification. Um, so I'll note that the codification process, we have been given a little bit of an extension because of everything. So assuming we can get these regs adopted in May or early June, um, we will make our grant deadline so that this will become part of the, you know, um, the grant that uh, the town town clerk's office is doing. Um, the only other thing that I'll mention is we do have an application um, that would have been received had we had our regular meeting last a couple of weeks ago for a sign, um, a special permit application for a sign. Um, so that will be a public hearing, which you guys will also be dealing with um, at the next meeting. Um, it's for a um, basically just an enlargement of an existing freestanding sign at the um, the package store. Um, and uh, that's that's the only thing that I that I've got going on. Okay, Mike, this is Dick. Uh, whether it requires the approval or not, I'd like to see the revised zoning map uh, kind of go through as this package. And I think I've sent you a couple of times the uh, list of what's existing in terms of the uh, items that are approved, plus the also what was discussed in the meetings that we had with John Filchek. So, you know, if we could have those available, so we're adopting those at the same time we adopt everything else, I think that would be good. Yeah, I, I, I'm do, I do have what you sent me, and I. Frankly, it's just taken longer than I thought, number one, because when I'm in the town hall, I'm covering the whole office myself. So the phone's ringing and it's crazy. But also the, the way that the re, the way that the zones and the parcels that are designated are written, it's like a distance of 1200 feet from this road and, and translating that to specific parcels with an actual scale to make sure that it, it it's just taken a lot longer than I thought. So I have it started. I will do my best to get it done for the public hearing. I, I just, I'm not sure that I'm going to get it done, but but I will do my darndest. <laughs> yeah, Mike, if if you kind of get it together and send me something that I can look at on, on my computer, uh, for some reason, uh, some of those, especially with the land in and around uh, the intersection of 74 and 44, uh, it only was talking about zoning like two or 300 feet from the road. Uh, it, it would be probably better to just zone the entire parcels. Uh, and most of it is just taken blanket zoning along 74 and 44 and uh, just making those, you know, uh, commercial. Uh, but but we, we can work on that, work, in, work on that offline if you'd like. Yeah, I mean, I can send you a a copy of the map, the part a blank map that I'm kind of, and then we can compare notes between what I'm got and what you've got. Um, I can I can email you a PDF of the parcel map. Okay. okay. But because it'd Any... be good to have, it'd be good to have that in the regs, because what we have in there now is very very, uh, you know, it's spot zoning. Well, Which and, 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 and Mike is aware of that and trying to get this done. Thank you, Mike. Anything else, Mike? That's all I have. Okay. Any uh, questions or comments for Mike? Okay. Thank you. And moving on to public comments. Uh, Paul, anything to comment on since you are a public? Froze. Oh, little movement, but your voice is kind of uh better. Better. Go ahead.
Let's give a couple of minutes, see if he comes back up. You coming back? <laughs> he gave up on us. <laughs> right. Oh, coming back. Yeah, tell me we froze up. There, I just realized I was muted also, and Paul is going to email our comments for those of you who didn't see that on the board there. Um, oh, okay. He uh, got lost at the most inopportune time, as he said. Okay, uh, that is it. I want to thank everyone for your patience, for your time for, again, keeping government moving forward. Um, and I think we're going to have to maybe do one more of these as we uh, go forward, depending on how things go with the uh, state government. But uh, uh, that's about it. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. This is Jerry. Okay. Jerry Dufresne. Uh, Correct. Janet, yeah. second. Second for Janet Pelley. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I'm going to say unanimous unless you want to hang on here. We're good. Amen. Thank you all. Valerie, thank you very much. Um, if you want to send uh, the email to Alex and myself so we can, the uh, minutes so we can go through those. Excuse me, was that Jerry that made the motion? Yes, it was. Jerry made the opening motion, first motion, and Janet Bellamy seconded. Okay. And it was unanimous. Yep. Okay. Thank you, Very Jack. good. Thank, Thank you, you all. Bye-bye. Good Thanks. night, everyone. Be safe. Bye. Thank you.